Can I ask you a question first of all? Because I was so shocked later on yesterday when I found out that in Oxfam's guidelines, whilst they don't in any way encourage their aid workers uh, to make use of prostitutes, mm. they don't explicitly ban it because it affects their civil rights. When did you last read their guidelines? Were you aware of this? No, not at all. And I think. But why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you read that kind of thing as a member of the committee? Oh, well, I, we can't read every every guideline of every, every charity, but I think the staff clearly should. And one of the things that really concerns me is well, that... Well, the staff clearly have, because it doesn't ban prostitution, and they've been using prostitutes. Yeah, and this is the thing. I mean, one of the, one of the allegations that most shocked me, actually, was people uh, using, coercing people for sex in exchange for aid. And that really actually shows the imbalance when power and influence of people that are in the most vulnerable in the world. Indeed, that's but the I, most I just, uh, and I don't want to pressure you, and I know Richard wants to speak in a moment, but, but it feels to me that's kind of part of the problem. You feel like you can't read everything. But that is on their website still yesterday. Mm. And it just exposes to me that you're on the committee that's there to scrutinise and look at the way they administration, huge funds, more than £400 million mm. worth of funds. And yet, you haven't read those guidelines. It feels like people well, haven't been on the ball in here. Bear in mind, prostitution is actually illegal in Haiti anyway. So, mm. so regardless, is it of, wrong regardless of guidelines, to not they're actually explicitly break... ban prostitution well, in a charity's regard, guidelines. Regard, well, they should, but regardless of that. So you um, would have changed that, that had you known about it. But regardless of that, it's actually they're actually breaking the law. And the fact is that they knew this was going on. They didn't pass the the Haitian am ambassador last week was talking about the fact that he wants more information passed mm. to him um, because. Uh, the law has been broken and actually the, the but it's the not Oxfam just about the law in the them. country the scandal is about the way the charity has been run and dealing well, yeah, with its staff because members. because so Oxfam the fact should have that passed was that in detail its guidelines on. is very important the fact that you didn't know about it it's very frightening. Well, I, I, I think as the committee, we, we scrutinise what DFID is doing. We, we scrutinise in the government. So this, I think that you've got to get the relationship right. So DFID... Um, you are give, there to oversee DFID, to make charities DFID are give, operating correctly. For sure, absolutely. So we will scrutinise what the government does. Um, and the government is the one that, that has given the contracts to the various charities uh, uh, along the way. So is that something you'll now be telling Oxfam to change? That never mind the civil yeah, liberties, they have to remove the, that from you, their guidelines, yeah, take very, it off very, their website yeah, very as much of so. now? Very much so. Because you've got to have a proper vetting process, you've got to have a proper um, enforcement process that actually builds up some sort of sense of trust between the people that are delivering charity to the beneficiaries themselves and the country that they're operating in. You see, really as, a, as, a, as a donor, <clears throat> I wouldn't give a brass farthing to Oxfam if I'd known that they mm. were saying to their workers, you can use prostitutes, it's all right. Um, because I would wonder if some of the money that I was giving was going to pay for those prostitutes and for those mm. parties. And I'm not blaming you for that. Sure. Um, I, I actually hear what you say, that, that there is a limit to what you can read. But I think she's making a really good point here, that actually we've now got to look at this root and branch. And it, what makes me worry is that we're just seeing the tip of the iceberg here. I mean, what's your sense? We're, how, how far into this, this scandal are we? About a week or so, maybe a little bit more? Yeah. What's your sense? That people who happen to be aid workers abroad, working for charities such as Oxfam, and there are others too, uh, turn to this kind of behaviour, or actually they're drawn to work for, for, for uh, organisations like Oxfam because they see the opportunity to get in there and take advantage of vulnerable people. So from the get-go, they're up to no good. Well, there's two things. I think there's a sense that they're both, but also I think, first of all, you've got to... Uh... Uh, understand that the vast, vast majority of aid workers are doing amazing work in really uh, brave they, I work. I mean, that's something which I need to be, yeah, to be, to in to be They're shown. working in conflict areas, they're working in disaster areas. Yes, and, but one and, of the reasons they go to conflict areas is so they can take advantage of the kind of people we're talking, talking about, about here. Thousands, you're talking about thousands of people across the world. Clearly, they're not all, uh, you know, doing this sort of despic despicable behaviour. No, but how many are? No, but you're right to talk about the tip of the iceberg, because you're right to actually look at um, other charities and other organisations. Just uh, one of our... We we raised this as a committee last month when one of our committee members, Pauline Latham, had been to a humanitarian summit last September in Turkey. And they were talking about whether UN peacekeepers and other NGOs were uh, using prostitutes mm. and sexual exploitation, because it's the exploitation and abuse that's but the real crucial But it's the fact that you were talking about that last year and it's been bubbling under. I want to just be very clear that the, this, this, um, these guidelines were on a staff <coughs> training and it was published on a website, so this is not put out to the public. But in a way, mm. that makes it more worrying, doesn't it, that that hasn't been scrutinised and looked at. And they're not encouraging use of prostitutes. They're just saying they can't mm. ban it. But that is, an, as you said, that is an 
implied Yeah, sanction, I, I suppose it's it, there because know. of omission uh, rather than, you know, as you say, uh, talking about it itself. It's just the fact that there's nothing in it, there about it. It hints at a culture where people felt it was OK to do this. Yeah, that, that may be the case, and that's why, as I say... You'll you know, pursue we, that, won't you, then? Oh, for sure, yeah. because, look, what, what my main concern is that last... Uh, when this first came out, Oxfam said, no, we've sorted this out in 2011, we, we were up and front about it. We've, heard the, we've had the drip-drip feed of allegations over the week. They've changed the vetting rules, which is to be welcomed mm. over the weekend. But nonetheless, if you're changing your policies now, and you said you've sorted out seven years ago, you mm. can't have it both ways. As I 